Hey, what's up, guys? It is Dan from Fight Wave, and today I'm joined by somebody I'm very excited to speak with. If you know anything about me, you know I love Australian MMA, and today's guest, in my opinion, one of the most bombshell announcements I might add when the fight got announced I don't think this was on the top of anyone's bingo list for how Australian MMA was going to kickstart 2024 but it's a fight for the ages for the eternal middleweight championship I'm so excited to have joining me today a Muay Thai world champion of the w WBC and if I remember correctly the World Kickboxing Association today I'm joined by Ben Johnston who will be joining us from the fight center in Brisbane Ben how is it going, brother? Thank you so much for your time. No, all good, man. I'm uh, going good. It's really hot right now, so I just had to go and uh, so I just went for a walk to turn the fans on because it's stinking uh, down here in Brisbane. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm going going well. Thank you, Dan. Absolutely, brother. A privilege to sit here and speak with you. And Ben, I gotta say, I don't think anybody expected the John Martin Frazier versus Ben Johnston fight announcement that came out of out of center field. You know, that was something that. I think was a welcome, welcome, unexpected surprise. Talk to me about how you're feeling now that, you know, the fight is out there. And more importantly, you're just in preparation and fight mode for this championship. You know, it's a big fight. I think a lot riding on this fight for both of you gentlemen. Talk to me a little bit about the training camp and how everything's been since the announcement. Yeah, well, um, in terms of training, bro, like not much changes, to be honest, in inside of outside of camp. Um, like, and... Even if I wanted to take a break, I can't because at, at TFC I'm sort of the like I'm the I'm the coach, I guess, but I feel like it's more like team captain, if that makes sense. Um and there's always someone in fight camp. So it's not like I fight and then take a week where I mess around eating food, doing nothing, and then just slowly ease my way back into it. It's like I fight on Saturday and Monday I'm back in your training at you know, first thing in the morning. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, in terms of inside, outside camp, but not much changes. It does. It obviously the, the, just the nature of having an opponent and having a, uh, having a fight, your intensity lifts. Um, but overall, man, the scheduling is pretty, pretty similar. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to be honest. I'm, I'm pretty keen to have a, have a crack at the belt and, and, uh, hopefully, you know, good things come off the back of that. No, yeah, definitely. And something you mentioned, which I really wanted to highlight was, you know, sort of adopting this coaching role, like you said, not necessarily, you know, coach, but essentially team captain, you know, somebody who the young bucks and the up and coming fighters go to, you're able to guide them a little bit, you're able to give them tidbits in the fight game, and really be able to kind of do all of it, you know, from fighting to coaching on to some degree, you know, talk to me about navigating that a little bit, because I see you doing a lot of work with Chelsea Hackett and Nathaniel Law. I know two young, uh, you know, two young fighters training out of the fight center that you're relatively close with. Talk to me about that dynamic and just being able to, to give pieces of what you've learned as a fighter to them while also implementing that dynamic of coaching into your fighting game. Yeah, so, um, yeah, well, as you said, you got we got Nate Law, Chelsea Hackett, uh, and we got just a, our MMA team. When I say captain coach, I do speak more for the MMA team. Um, for our like amateur MMA team, I'm the coach. Uh, for the Muay Thai, the boxing, the Jiu Jitsu, I'm coach. You know, like it's it's pretty clear. Um, in the MMA, in amongst the pro team that we got, which got like you know, like I said, Chelsea Hackett, Nate, Nate Law, Darcy. Uh, Darcy Vendi got Sam Dobb, got Nick Kepu. Um, I'm sure, you know, there's heaps, there's a bunch of other guys that probably are not as as well known. Um, but, you know, they're all professional fighters that are all like really, really trying to break through, you know, and Chelsea obviously has already got a chance in the pivot. Diego Pereira, I know I almost forgot Diego, he just came back from his uh, honeymoon today. Um, but, you know, they're all like, everyone's right on the cusp, like this. You know, um, so, but I'm also right on the cusp, you know, so it, it, it makes it quite hard that I can't, we all train at the same time um, and I can't just like dedicate time to like a regular coach would where I just stand there and watch and critique, and, you know, but on the positive side of that, I'm like on the mats, feeling it out with everybody. I'm always like sharpening the sword, so to speak, and and testing the theories and trialing and, you know, and, 
and you, everything you try, you get to try it with the guys and see how they're doing it, see what they, you know. So there's, I actually, I actually probably prefer it this way um, to just a regular, like more uh, traditional style coaching where they just watch from the sidelines. Um, because I'm doing it all, even all the hard stuff. If, I, if I'm like, all right, we're doing this ridiculous type of conditioning or ridiculous workout. It's weird doing it. You know, I'm not standing there on the sideline going, come on, dig deep, stop being soft, blah, blah. You know, I'm not just like trying to motivate through bullshitting, you know, like, oh, I did this. When I was young, I walked 10 miles to school in the bare, bare feet and stuff. But, you know, I'm doing it and they can all see it. And, you know, I think it's, uh, I, I think it, 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 it allows me to, to uh, tell people to do difficult stuff a lot more when I'm doing it as well. Um, so yeah, man, it's it's a, at the moment the culture down here is unreal. Like just with with that team, um, everyone is all in, and I think that's what it really takes. Like it's a, it's, a, it's actually quite a quite a big problem. You know, I really noticed how important it was when I went over to Sydney kickboxing. I do fly back and forth between here and New Zealand a fair bit, um, but when I went over there, I went and experienced that room of just having so many people that are all in, like hundred percent. They're not. I'll train, you know, I'll go to work and then fit it in. I might be able to train today. Oh, I had to do a bit of overtime. Sorry, I can't make it. That that doesn't happen over there. They're all all in. And these are guys, even some of them have never had a fight. And they're all in. Um, so I saw that. I was like, you know what? Nothing like it exists over here. Um, and I can't, unfortunately, move to New Zealand. I've just got like this TFC where I, where I am right now. You know, I'm, I'm very tied in here. And I love it here, you know. I love this gym. I love everyone here. So I don't want. I don't want to leave full time. Um, so we've, you know, we're. I wouldn't say the only one in a, in our area, but I haven't. I I don't know of any others that are doing it the same way we are. They could be, but I just don't know about it, you know. So. No, yeah, definitely, and you know, like you said, more of an active coaching role. Not necessarily standing on the sidelines and just saying do this or do that, but taking a, a more proactive approach to the way that you dissect the fight game, the way that you give people tidbits of information. Because if you're not doing it, then what what's to you know what's to say that they'll do it? But I, like you said, like the culture right now at the fighting center is remarkable. You Tim, you mentioned some of the names, you know, Nick Capu, Sam Dobb, Darcy Vendy, you know, Chelsea Hack and Nate Law. I, I'm pretty sure the majority of them have a fight book. If I remember correctly, Nick Capu mm. is actually fighting Alfred Stoddard, who's another standout at 185 right now in Australia. But like you mentioned, right now, I feel like just soaking it all in like a sponge. You mentioned going over to City Kickboxing and training there. I know Nate made the full-time move to the fight center just to be able to get more fights as an amateur. Talk to me a little bit about that. You mentioned going to that room. It's it's one of the most remarkable rooms in all of combat sports. I don't think that there's quite a room like the City Kickboxing Training Room. You've got the likes of Brad Riddell, Dan Hooker, Carlos Ulbricht, Israel Adesanya, just to name a few in those higher weight classes, and Blood Diamond, of course. You know, talk to me a little bit about going over there, picking their brains, and, you know, like you said, the system. Coach Eugene and Behrman does things to a T, to a science. Was there anything that you kind of picked up from his coaching style that you've been implementing at the Fight Center yourself? Yeah, bro, heaps. Um, actually, I think even, like, there was things about his, like, his system that um, that I learned, but also just the way uh, the way he builds the culture, like, the build builds the, uh, just the team, team environment and all that. Like, those guys, they're all good friends. Like, they're all, the, it's a proper family, you know? Uh, that but they that gets thrown around pretty loosely. Like, oh, this is our family. You know, a lot of the gyms say that, but I like, I really saw another level of it over there. Um, and it, you know, it's, inspir it's inspiring. Like, man, like, I, I thought we had a good thing going before I left. So like, when this is when I first went over, it was about two and a half years ago. I thought we had a good thing going. I was like, okay, no, nah, this is there's a whole another level to this of like how committed people can be and. Um, yeah, inspired me to like instill that over here, and you know, like I really feel like it, it's it's rubbed off on us in a, in a big way. Um, so that was that was a big thing I learned over there, just how he, how he's able to cultivate that, um, and he does it without being like this egotistical dictator. You know what I mean? It's not it's not growth. 
yeah, yeah, it's not like that, bro. You know, um, so that was really cool because you do see that as well. You do see the other gyms that have this like family thing, but it's a cult. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, yeah, that that hasn't. He, it's not like that. So I was like, man, this is this is really cool. Um, everyone, everyone loves him. Like they really do. They really look up to him over there without without him demanding it or trying to scare people into, you know what I mean? They manipulate people or anything like that. Um, so that, that was huge. That was something I really took away. Uh, and then just the style, like, even I think it was the first time he was holding pads for me. Um, I didn't, re- it was where I really made that transition from Muay Thai striker to MMA striker. Um, was he's just like, fuck off. Like he's going, why are you so close? Why are you so close to me? You know, he's all like standing trying to hit the pads. The way, bro, the way you do pads in Muay Thai is you just like, and you know, you're just going for it. That's Muay Thai style pads. Um, and he's thinking, you know, it's tactics. He's got, I can stop standing so close to me. You know, he's like telling me to move back over and over and over. So that was a bit of an eye opener too, because they're different. You know, Muay, there's not a lot of Muay Thai guys that do transition well to uh, MMA. Um, but if there's going to be one person that'll teach you to do it, it's, you know, it's Eugene Behrman. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. And that, well, that, I mean, one thing I really wanted to highlight, and I love that you bring up that transition from Muay Thai to mixed martial arts, because I feel like two people in Australia that don't get the credit they deserve, both of you under the same gym banner, Chelsea Hackett and yourself, for transitioning from that Muay Thai background into MMA, not almost seamlessly, I'm sure there was a ton of work done under the way. I know you yourself, a high a high ranking brown uh, brown belt in jiu jitsu, if I remember correctly. You know the way I feel like you and Chelsea transition. It doesn't get talked about enough from Muay Thai to MMA because the experience you guys brought with you. You know, countless fights in Muay Thai and under the Muay Thai rule set coming over to MMA. I feel like you guys often get discounted in terms of experience, but you guys have shown that's far from the case in the fights. And I feel like, like you said, working with them, we definitely saw the differences in your last fight and i know there was a lot of controversy surrounding the opponent and a lot of you know just i don't i don't even know what to call it to be honest you know that the whole last fight i feel like was one to kind of look past and I, I think a lot of people look forward to this fight talk to me a little bit about seeing those adjustments in the fight game and also you know they came over to sydney uh, or not sydney they came over to to australia recently what was that like having them maybe in the gym environment in in australia as opposed to you going over to new zealand what was that whole experience like yeah i mean the the boys come over a bit the boys and girls i should say um because they they got uh you know they'll fight over here a lot there's not heaps of fights for them to get over in um new zealand there's only a couple of shows so they're often fighting on like Eternal, XFC, be down. And when they're over here, most of the time they'll come, you know, they need a place to train and whatever. And, you know, there, that door's always open to those guys. Um, you know, Toes Him Up was, he was, he's from here. Well, he's not from here, but he had lived here for a period of time a few years back. So he has some friends in that that he visits over here. So he was, he was popping in the gym a lot when he was over here just to stay fit um, through Christmas and, you know, like, I love that I got that relationship with those guys. They've done so much for me. The least I can do is, yeah, gym is yours, you know, use it. Like, um, but in terms of transitioning, like me and Chelsea, you know, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, I, I, I think for me personally, like I said, Eugene was huge. I just to be being able to go over there to CKB and, um, you know, mix up with those guys and really see where I was at was huge. My coach Dan Bell, who was my Muay Thai coach. Um, he still still is really. We do heaps of work together. We we'll catch up once a week, and a lot of it's just a lot of it's just picking apart theories, man. You know, just and having someone to really get bogged down into the into the details on, and like, what about if he does this? What if I do that? And someone's just not going to get impatient, you know, like like oh fucking let's just do it. What are we doing? You know, like just hit the pads. And just not being, but like, okay, well, what about this? What about that? And all like just getting to the edge of overthinking something. But then you come out with this product that's like, that's really well thought out, you know? Um, so that was huge. And uh, and then obviously just now we got just great bodies in the gym here that every day you're testing out stuff. And Darcy is one of the best grapplers that I've ever trained with. 
Um, so to then have that to deal with, and he's a great striker too. That's the crazy part of, part about it. He's probably known more as Grafton. He's a great striker. Oh, he gives me a real hard time. Um, and uh, you know, just test, just being able to test all your theories is probably what what really makes it, you know, makes you get to get to a more polished product, I guess. No, yeah, absolutely. Like you said, just being able to experiment and really being able to say, you know what, fuck it, let's do it. Let's just make it happen. That's, I think, one of the most fulfilling parts about training. And like you said, you know, being able to take a little bit of everything from everywhere. Like, And I know they came over and you, I want to backpedal a little bit. Like you said, it's a family environment over there. I feel like every one of the fighters from CKB is truly invested in the careers and best interests of everyone training out of that gym or anybody even affiliated with that gym. I know they came out to Australia as well for the Andrew Schultz show. And I know that was a quite, quite a bit of an experience to, to see Andrew Schultz live. I wanted to ask you about that experience and, you know, just being in that room with Izzy and Schultz, arguably two of the funniest people on the planet. What was that whole experience like? No, it was very cool, man. Um, yeah, Andrew Schultz. Yeah. No, it was kind of it was kind of weird, man, because he was one of the first, I think, one of the first people that you know, I've like hung out with that was famous that wasn't a fighter, you know. Um, so it's yeah, it's just a, it's a bit it's a bit different. You you, I like, I'm like shit. Do I have to try and be funny to talk to this guy? <laughs> you know, as a fighter, you just blow out about fighting, and it's not. Yeah, you know, um, but no, that was mad. Like, is he, yeah, you know, he took me and Nate uh, out to the show. And of course, he's like mates with Schultz. So we're going backstage and whatever. So that was mad, bro. Yeah. Um, no, he's just, he's just a regular dude. Um, and he's, he's one of my favorite comedians. So very cool, man. Very cool. Can't thank Izzy enough for that one. No, yeah, absolutely, Ben. And I feel like in just, just in terms of guys that have gone under the radar, Ben Johnston's at the top of that list in terms of middleweights. I feel like you don't get enough credit as it stands for the body of work that you've done as a fighter. And I wanted to just highlight that a little bit. I feel like you've really been one of those guys in Australia, gone under the radar. But I feel like time and time again, when you do fight, you remind people that, hey, I'm here to stay. I'm just a, you know, you're a remarkable talent in that sense. And I wanted to ask you because, you know, you're going into this fight, a completely different fight from the last one against John Martin, against John Martin Frazier in this one. It's a big fight. I think there's a lot of, uh, not implications per se, but a lot riding on this fight for both of you. I feel like anytime there is a title fight, there sure. is a little bit of that, a little bit of that pressure attached to it. I wanted to ask you kind of how your thought process is in going into this fight, and you know some of the potential things that can come with it. You know, just you know fighting in this high stakes environment because you fought in a high stakes environment all across the world. I want to ask you about just the mindset going into this one. Bro, I think um, like it's it's like you said. You, there, there's there's a lot riding on it, but um, you know, I'm I'm coming to the pointy end of my career. I'm not sure where uh, John Martin Fraser. I'm just going. I'm going to call him JMF. I hope he's alright with that. I, I don't know if that's a thing. I just call him JMF. Um, but he, uh, you know, I'm not sure where he's at. But he's probably hitting the thirty mark or something like that, as far as I know. Maybe thirty one this year. Um, and I'm. 33 I'll be 34 in October so like I can't I, I don't know I can't really afford to be taking many losses you know what I mean so I'd say because at the end of the day I'm trying to get to UFC Eternal is amazing Eternal is the best as far as I'm concerned the best promotion there is you know for us especially the Aussies Kiwis and um, outside of UFC uh, so that's awesome but my goal has always been to go to the UFC um, and it's kind of like you said before, man, I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with the amount of fights I've had and what I've achieved already. And the only thing that's exciting me to keep fighting and keep going is something like going to the UFC. So if, if I have another, if I have a loss here, it's probably going to be, probably going to have to go string another four or five wins together in a row. Um, before they'd probably consider me and shit by that time what how old am i going to be you know um so you know there's a chance if i lose this will be my last one um who knows bro you know i'm yeah whatever but i'm okay with that that's a good thing i just go all right well fuck it let's go enjoy it man like this might be this might be my last go at it 
And if I win, cool, we go again, <laughs> you know, and I'll just keep on doing that. If I win, we go again and then we'll see where it goes. But if it's like, if I, if I lose all good, I, you know, multi-time world champion had fucking, I don't know, 30, 35, 40 fights or something like that. I don't need to keep fighting to prove that I'm like, you know, I know who I am, you know. Um, and one more, one loss. If I if I lose, I'll, I'll go out with like a 30, 32 wins and four losses record or something like that. You know, it's a pretty good record. So all, good. yeah, it's all good. Like, I'm I'm not afraid to lose this fight. Um, I just want to go out there and like enjoy it. It might be my last one if I lose. Not that I think I'm going to lose. Um, you know, but but. I'm, I'm treating it like I'm 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 going out of my shield. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to leave anything left on the table because I don't want to half-ass it if, if it's going to be my last one. Now, if I win, then fuck, man. I really I I don't want to mess around on this local scene for any longer than I have to. I really want to get to UFC. I really want to see where I'm at. You know, because I feel like I I feel like I got it. You know, I feel like I got the formula and the and the you know, I know I'm 34 on paper, but I don't feel 34. You know, um, I feel healthy, I feel strong, I feel sharp and fast and better than ever before. And you know, yeah, I, you know, I've been in that room over at CKB, and you know what I mean. I think, I think, I think I'll go all right in the in the big dance. So yeah, I'm pretty keen to pretty keen to just give it a good crack. And there's a lot riding on it, but I'm, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. Pressure, but welcome pressure, I feel like is the best way to put it. I feel like you really excel in the pressure. And like you said, leaving no stone unturned come to fight with JMF. I think it's just going to be a remarkable fight on both fronts. And Ben, I want to thank you so much for your time, for your transparency, and for, I feel like, what's been one of the most positive personalities I've seen in MMA as of late, you know, just in terms of the excitement and, and the love that you have for the game. I feel like it truly emulates and radiates off the person that you are. And I want to ask you just on a Thank final you, note, you know, like you mentioned, this is do or, not do or die per se, but, you know, a lot riding on this, but of just going in there and wanting to have a good time. You know, this fight's at the start of the year. I want to ask you just a couple of the goals, I guess, fighting wise in 2024. I know you labeled, you said, you know, this fight very well could be the last, but, you know, with a win over JMF, like you said, making the push for that UFC banner, but also just some personal goals. What are some personal goals you have maybe from a coaching perspective? I know you mentioned uh, off air, you know, Chelsea Hackett may or may not uh, be fighting very soon. I know a lot of the other guys in the yeah. gym, like Nick Kepu are fighting as well. What's the goals for you as a coach and also just as a person? I know you mentioned off air, some pretty exciting news in your personal life. I'll let you decide if you want to share, but yeah. you know, <laughs> no, yeah. rem no. absolutely remarkable stuff, brother. Thank you so much. And yeah, floor is yours. Yeah, no. Nah, uh, well, personal goals, like I, like you, you're alluding to, I just got engaged, which is awesome. I mean, I'm extremely happy about it. She's a she's a great girl, you know. Um, so yeah, should have done it earlier. Should have put the ring on it way way ages ago. But anyway, I'm happy I did it. I'm I'm real stoked about it. Um, but um, personal, obviously it's UFC. Get me to the UFC. I really want to see how I go. You know, um, which I already spoke about. But with coaching. So Chelsea's in, obviously in the PFL. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say. Like, I don't know if any announcements have been made official or what. Anyway, I'm very, I want to make sure she keeps winning wherever that, whatever that looks like and whatever opportunities she gets. I want to make sure her opportunities she does well with. Um, Cause you know, she's trusted me to, to guide her through it. You know what I mean? Um, and that goes for all the other guys like Darcy, he's recently come over and it just works like the, the team works. And I really want, I really want to uh, just the gratification or like the acknowledgement with some wins for him because he hasn't, he hasn't fought under us yet. His last fight, like two weeks out, his opponent ruptured his ACL, so he was unable to fight, you know, so he hasn't had the opportunity to showcase it yet. Uh, last year, we had like a 90% or maybe it was like 93% win ratio in the MMA or something like that, which is unreal, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd like to keep those 
those wins up. Not so much. I don't want to be protective of it that you end up picking easy fights, which is really, you have to be really conscious of that you end up just like, oh, no, he's too tough. He's, so I want to make sure the guys get challenged, um, but also want to make sure they're ready. Um, so, you know, all the boys, we got start of the year, me, Darcy, Nick, and Sam, uh, Sam Dobb, like all four, we're all like middleweights, welterweights. Nate's got a bit of an injury at the moment, but he's training about 70%, just working around his injury that he's got. Um, you know, so as soon as he's ready to go, I really want to make sure he keeps winning as well. He's Since he's come over, he, he had three fights and he won all of them. I'd like to keep that streak going for him. Um, you know, there's heaps of amateurs. I, I could just keep rattling off everybody's names and what I want, want to see. And, but, I, I, yeah, I want to keep this momentum going. Even there's a couple of guys, a couple of Muay Thai guys that got big WBC fights coming up. Um, and the boxers, my boxing amateur team is off its head at the moment. Uh, they're like just a bunch of young guys, all hungry, all just coming up. I had the rebuild about a year ago. We should have started again from scratch. And it's just at that melting point of ice, you know, from negative 20 to zero degrees, you don't see any change. But I feel like we've just hit like that one degree mark where the ice is melting. And you're really starting to see some momentum. So just with all of those, all those things, man, like I really, yeah, keen as to see just where we end up this year. I won't get married until probably another year or two, man. It's a big expensive thing, which I don't have the money for right now. Uh, but, you know, if the UFC gives me a contract, who knows? <laughs> you know? So nah, we'll, we'll see what happens. No, yeah, absolutely. Like you said, right now, off the charts, I think, out of the Fight Center in Brisbane, Australia right now. You know, like you said, a big 2024, already an active start to the year. A lot of fights to look forward to. Yours, I think, at the top of that list, more importantly. Ben, thank you so much for your time. Once again, congrats on the thank engagement. You. I think that's always amazing news to hear. Just fighters doing, I think, amazing things outside of fighting. And I know that you're going to be very excited for that. And also, best of skill in the upcoming fight. To the fans at home watching, do be sure to check out Ben Johnson versus John Martin Frazier. Come next month, we'll be having either a new Eternal Middleweight Champion or... Or we'll be seeing, you know, John Martin Frazier retain his belt. Either way, I think it's one of the most remarkable fights of the year thus far in Australia. If you're not watching it, you're doing yourself a disservice. I'll be linking Ben's socials in the description down below. Do be sure to check him out. Great fighter, even greater person. It's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave. Have a great day, guys.